On the cable market, in terms of technology, Decked Cat IQ supports HD with G722. Now, cable apps are working on specifications. They're finalizing the, uh, the definition of integrating Decked Cat IQ into the EMTAs. Additional vocoders are relevant to broadband over cable deployments are also uh, applicable here because if we consider the cable market to be an access market, then uh, in a sense it's providing a broadband connectivity and everything that we've seen before is relevant here as well. Uh, in terms of products, we can expect that there will be a very quick evolution of EMTAs shortly after the standardization is completed and native HD support in the user devices is anticipated, therefore. In terms of networks, voice RP networks and services are widely deployed on the cable market, and there's an inherent advantage in the convergence and the full control of the infrastructure that the cable operators can enjoy. As an overall perspective, the cable market presents a very unique situation. On one hand, the cable market presents the early leaders of large-scale voice IP adoption. Therefore, they're very natural candidates for a smooth, large-scale HD voice IP adoption. Now, the next step forward is not a big one. It can further position the value of the cable networks when comparing to the PSTN competitors. Let's look at the mobile perspective. Over here, in terms of technology, we're very well progressed. We've had an evolution from GSM to GSM EFR, AMR, and AMR wideband, G722.2. We've had a similar process from QCALP all the way to EVRC wideband. Now, those vocoders were developed because they were well suited for air interface impairments. In terms of products, however, we still do not have mobile handsets that natively support HD voice over IP. We do have devices with HD speaker and microphone available. If we install a soft client that supports HD vocoders, then we can uh, give an experience of high definition voice RP calling from mobile handset to mobile handset. In terms of the networks, we've seen equipment makers that have announced transcoding free operation and tandem free operation gateways. And we've seen some limited live trials uh, out there in the field. The migration to all IP mobile networks is promising as legacy infrastructure is limiting the use of high definition voice over IP. As an overall perspective, we see that the mobile world is lagging. Uh, voice over IP over mobile will drive high definition on HD able devices, which we just discussed. I think that uh, MV and NOS are anticipated to play a very, very significant role uh, because they would see HD as a service differentiator. Gartner released an analysis saying that 10 years from now, more than half of the mobile voice traffic will be carried end-to-end -end using voice over IP. High definition adoption in fixed line further stresses voice quality issues in the mobile. Again, this will be promoting the mobile operators to offer high definition to provide better voice quality to their users. When looking at the PSDN, well, Obviously, this is a big challenge because inherently, PSDN network cannot carry high definition voice services. However, uh, the broadband over PSDN is enabling everything that we have discussed previously. Wideband telephony over broadband services over PSDN infrastructure. Let's try and draw um, conceptually an HD bar. So if we're looking at this year, 2009, we see that the PSDN mobile and cable market still have not cleared the HD bar. However, the broadband and enterprise markets have. Over here, we can offer a very interesting perspective. Consider that people make their own decisions in the broadband market. Any individual can choose if he wants to use high definition voice over IP or narrow band voice over IP by choosing Skype or other clients. So whenever people make their own choices, they very quickly make the quality choice. Similarly, at the enterprise world, a single IT manager very quickly makes a decision to adopt high definition voice RP for his organization. When we're talking about the mobile or cable markets, obviously this is a large scale operation. It takes more time. However, when these starts happening, it brings high definition voice RP to the masses. Looking forward, I think that within three years from now, we'll see that the cable and mobile markets will make very significant moves forward in clearing the high definition voice over IP bar. A question remains, 
Is high definition voice RP ubiquitous so that everybody can enjoy? Remember the questions that shouldn't be asked. We need to be able to call from anywhere to anywhere and get HD experience. So if we looked at the PSTN cable broadband mobile enterprise world, there is a need for a transcoding function because each one of these worlds may be adopting a different vocoder. So while access islands do clear the HD bar, we know that different access networks use different vocoders. There's a very large number of reasons for it. Some of them are political, some of them are technological. Remember the wideband vocoders that are used on uh, mobile networks because they're suited for air interface impairments. Operators are geared to minimize the set of valid vocoders because it simplifies uh, the work for them in managing the network and it further reduces the costs associated in working such networks. Now, end terminals will be limited. So we cannot anticipate that all end terminals will simply use all vocoders and the issue will be reduced to vocoder negotiation. So this is because there's licensing costs, there's legacy non-aggradable terminals out there in the field. There is still a need for a transcoding function. The key characteristics of such transcoding function is that it needs to be able to do wideband to wideband transcoding with minimal impact on fidelity. Wideband to narrowband transcoding, it needs to support different architecture, either standalone as SIP back to back user agent or controlled as suitable to an IMS MRFP slash BGF architecture. Uh, media server capabilities are needed in this transcoding function for uh, wideband conferencing or wideband announcements. And it's not just voice transcoding. You need to be able to handle fax, tones, voice quality enhancements and more. Audio Codes has started off uh, implementing voice over IP into our own proprietary DSPs. Uh, we've taken various set of vocoders and fit them on to the core infrastructure of our, of our entire product offering. So when we talk about G722, G729.1, 711.1, uh, wideband EVRC or wideband AMR, they're all suited onto our DSPs. And these DSPs are present in all of our products. So we have IP media products that support HD conferencing and streaming. We have high availability carrier grade media gateways that support IP to IP transcoding. We have residential devices and IP phones. We have multi-service business gateways and we have a set of voice over packet processors. Thank you for watching.